I never want to go back to my Stand and worship with us this morning as we sing. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my Jesus can't nobody do me like the Lord can't nobody do me like Jesus he's my friend he healed my body then it told me to live on he healed my body then it told me to live on Jesus can't nobody 
Amen. Amen. Do you love the Lord? Amen. Amen. It is good to see you in the house of God this morning. Thank you for being here at Hodges Church of God to worship with us this morning. We are grateful and thankful for each and every one of you. For all of you that have joined us this morning online via Facebook this morning, thank you as well for joining us worshiping with us this morning. Morning. I don't know about you, but I am excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. This is going to maybe be a little bit unusual today uh, in, in, the, in, in how things flow this morning, but I just want you to hold on because God has a word for you this morning. He has a specific call that the Lord has given me this morning, today, for you and this church and the church in this hour. I'm going to speak about that here shortly. I'm going to get right back into worship. I'm not going to delay because I want the, the word that the Lord has birthed in my spirit this morning. You know, I don't, you know I'm, I'm one that's prepared. You know. I don't wait till the Sunday morning to get my word from the Lord to get a sermon. Uh, I've got to, the sermon I have prepared for today has probably been written for over a month. But the Lord has arrested my heart this morning and has spoke something so specifically into me that I cannot get away from it this morning. And that, I, and that I want to share that with you. And just to be honest with you, you know how crazy this is? I don't even know what I'm going to say. Now that's, that's faith. Or foolishness, I don't know. But the Lord has given me a, a specific statement today, a specific scripture that the Lord has taken me to this morning. And I'm going to speak on that, and then we're going to demonstrate that in this house today. I'm going to give you the opportunity to demonstrate it. It'll be up to you whether or not you do that. Amen? Amen. So just quickly before we transition right back in uh, to worship this morning, don't forget, brief share, if you've signed up for that, make sure you go ahead and pay for that. We need to, for you to do that to secure your spot because the spots are limited. If you still have any questions about that, you can ask Betty Freeman down here to my left. Raise your hand for me. There you are. You can ask her about Grief Share. Uh, you can also go to griefshare.org. There's information there. You can actually sign up on their site as well. Or you can, there is a paper uh, form out here in the side foyer on the table that you can sign up there for that. But we do need you to go ahead, sign up, and pay for that so that your spot will be secure. Because once those five spots have been paid for, that's probably going to be about all we get because we're getting too close to the class really to, to order any more books. We may have another week or so that we could order books, uh, but that would be about it. So we've got, we got to really start finalizing this class. Amen? So if you need that, if you need, and I, I, I will encourage you to do it. If you've suffered uh, death and lost separation, through death from loved one, family member, husband, sons, daughters, whatever it may be, I would encourage you, listen to your pastor, I would encourage you to invest the time, the effort, and the $15 it takes to buy the book into yourself, your life, and your future. Amen? So make sure that you do that. Uh, and again, that is in the side for you or at griefshare.org. You see down front here, we have a, a new, there's a new container, we have a new box that I believe Miss Rachel bought for us. Um, what we had had, we, I've told you before, and we hadn't talked about it in a while, so I probably need to mention it again, is we have, we have in this container a list of names of loved ones, friends, family members, co-workers that are lost, that need Jesus Christ. And so we've, we've placed them in this container, and what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to constantly hold those. You don't have to know the names of each individual to hold them up in prayer. God knows who's there. God knows what they need. Amen. But I'm going to ask you to be constantly praying over those. Our intercessors are going to pray over those every Sunday morning when they come from 8.30 to 9.30. Our intercessory prayer team is here in this sanctuary interceding for services for you, for me. And they're going to intercede for the lost. But I want you to do that as well throughout the week. I want you to pray over those. And if you have any names you want to add to that, you don't have to tell anybody. Just jot them down on a piece of paper, walk up here, stick them in there, shut the lid on it. And then we'll begin to pray over those names. Amen? Will you do that with me? Amen. The, I, I love you. The Lord loves you. I want us to pray, and then I want us to focus on God and worship, and then prepare your hearts and minds for what the Lord is going to call us to today. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you have afforded us. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hmm. Hmm. Lord, I feel your holy presence in the house this morning. It's not by chance that you are here, that we have prepared our hearts and minds and our lives today. We've come as an offering to you, Lord. We've, we've presented ourselves as a living sacrifice this morning, holy and acceptable unto you. 
And Lord, I sense the presence and the stirring, a stirring of the Holy Spirit in our midst this morning. That God, you would begin to move through each individual heart, mind, and life. You would quicken our, our hearts to hear the word this morning. Quicken our feet to move toward the word this morning. And Lord, that you would just cause us to encounter the spirit, the power, the presence, and the glory of Almighty God. Father, we trust you with our life, with our everything, with our every moment. And Lord, we ask you to now to speak to us. Speak to us, O oh God. Position us, Lord, for the days and weeks and years ahead, not only of this church, of us individually, but of the corporate body of Christ. Position your church, God, to be and do what you have called her to be and what you've called her to do. Now, Lord, we just ask you to receive this, this simple offering of praise this morning. Lord, it, we, we, we may not be the most gifted singers, but God, we give out of our heart to you today. So, Lord, as we open our mouths, let us declare your majesty. Let us declare your righteousness. Let us declare your glory. And Father, let us lavish our praise upon you today that you may be crowned with glory from your people, that the honor may be all yours today and the glory be all yours today. And Lord, we give you praise for it all in Christ's name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Turn around and wave at somebody. Tell them good morning and welcome to church this morning. Healing is here. Healing is here. Healing is here. And I 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Will you lift your hands to heaven this morning? Will you call on the name of the Lord this morning as we prepare to get started here today? Can you just reach heaven for a moment? Lord, we call on your name this morning. Lord, we call on the name of the Lord God Almighty this morning. For Lord, we are not able, but you are. Lord, we're not able today, but you are. We're not wise enough today, but you are. We're not strong enough today, but you are. Father, we trust you today. We trust your word this morning. And we trust the Spirit of God this morning. That you're going to speak what needs to be spoken. You're going to do what needs to be done. And you're go we're going to respond to your call this morning, God. Not begrudgingly, but Lord, with anticipation. Not out of fear, but out of hope. Not out of worry, but out of faith. That we shall respond to the call of the voice of God this morning. That we may hear you and we may respond to you. Now, Father, I ask you to speak this morning. I ask you to order my mind that it would hear your voice and it would speak only the words, God, that you desire to be spoken. Not a, not a syllable more than what you have ordered. Not a minute longer than what you have declared it. Father, may it be so today. May we gather, Lord, in this house this morning with hearts that are rent, hands that are lifted, souls that are hungry for the encounter that you are desiring to have with us today. Father, let it be so as you have declared it. Let it be as you have desired it. And Lord, we praise you for it and honor you and glorify you and magnify your name. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen and amen. You may be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to read you a lot of scripture at the outset, so I'm going to let you be seated today. When you say amen, that means, Lord, let it be so. Amen? So as the Lord has declared it and as the Lord has desired it, Lord, let it be so this morning. You can turn with me if you desire. This will not be on the overhead, Matt. This is not the scripture you have in the back. So if you're going to follow along, you're going to have to turn in your Bible or you're going to have to pull it up on your phone. 1 Peter chapter 5. We're going to start in verse 5 and we're going to go through verse 11. And then I'm going to come back and say what the Lord gives me to say. I'll give you just a moment. 1 Peter 5. Verse 5 through 11 this morning. I'm going to read these scriptures and I'm going to speak what the Lord gives me and then I'm going to give you an opportunity and then we're going to go from there and see what the Lord would have us to do. 1 Peter 5 verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. And be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. Steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory, by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Can you say amen to the reading of the word of the Lord this morning? So I told you at the outset that the Lord began to stir something in my spirit this morning. When I got out of 
bed early this morning to prepare to come over here to the sanctuary to pray and prepare myself for the day the Lord began to stir something in me and as I sat down and I read some scripture this morning and I read through first Peter 5 the entire chapter and and, and, and the Lord began to deal with me on humility, but more sp specifically than humility is humbling. And that word humble is an adjective. Humility is a noun. Humble is an adjective, and so it describes a person or a thing. And so God began to deal with me over this, and I, my, my spirit began to weep. And I literally stood in this sanctuary this morning, and I began to weep before the Lord. And I began to just throw myself before his throne for grace and mercy. And I begin to call on his name. And what I'm about to say to you, I don't tell you in any way to cause you to fear or to worry, but to, that you would be aware that you would be able to do exactly what Peter just said for us to do. The church has enjoyed a long history in America of peace, of blessing, of prosperity. Amen? But in my spirit, I know this. That we are getting ready to enter into a season of persecution. A season of struggle and a season of affliction. We are at a place in our nation that the church is going to be at the forefront of those who seek evil and who seek the things of men. We have to be prepared. And not caught off guard. Peter said be sober. Be vigilant. Watchful. Mindful of what is going on around you. He never said be in fear. He never said worry about what the enemy is doing. He said watch for him. Look at him. You'll see what he's doing. See, the enemy will reveal himself. And he'll reveal what he is doing. He just can't help himself. But the church is to be vigilant and to be sober. Peter opened his scriptures. Before he got to the individual, he went to the body of Christ. And he said, submit yourselves one to another. Humble yourselves before each other. That simply means, you know, there's a verse in the, in the Bible that says that you should, we should prefer our brother. When you walk in humility one with another, it means that you put others before yourself. That you think about the welfare of others, the safety, security of others. That you prefer others over yourself. That's what humility is. Uh, one writer said humility is not, is not uh, thinking uh, less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. And it's preferring those that are around you. But Peter quickly switched. And he said, you know what? He said, the reason you need to do this is because God will resist the proud. He said, God, God is not drawn to those who are haughty or who are proud or who are puffed up in themselves or their own abilities or their own knowledge or their own wisdom. He said, God will resist the proud, but he will give grace to those who are humble. If our nation... If our world has ever needed grace, it needs grace today. And how shall the world encounter the grace of God but through the church of Jesus Christ? But the church must be humbled before the Lord. So we, we live in a society, in a nation that is screaming out for grace, that needs grace whether they realize it or they don't. And the church, despite, despite what Peter said, he's, Peter said there will be sufferings. There's going to be trials and persecutions. There's, there's, there's going to be hard times that you're walking into. But Peter said in those times, remain vigilant. <coughs> Excuse me this morning, my throat is very dry. Remain sober. Stay humble. Stay humble before the Lord. Don't worry about the affliction. See, we <coughs> excuse me, we have been so protected, sheltered in the American church from affliction and from suffering. 
that when suffering comes, we don't know how to handle it. We kind of wilt like a flower in the summer heat because we're not used to it. And we're going to, probably in a couple of weeks, we're probably going to touch back on some of this as we get back into Malachi. So some of it may sound familiar again to you. But there are churches, parts of the church in different parts of the world that face constant affliction, constant pressure from government, from outside sources, from, from those who want to silence the church, from those who want to stop the spreading of the gospel, the message of Jesus Christ. And every day they rise in affliction. But every day they rise in their commitment to God and they are humble before the Lord. Why? Pastor, what, what are you saying? What are we what are we talking about this morning? I'm saying that as persecution comes, and it will come. As troubles come, and they will come. As trials come, and they will come. Listen to me. I know it's, it's hard preaching to a church and to a nation that has lived on the prosperity and the blessings of God for so long that we no longer understand that persecution of the, of the righteous is a real thing. But hear me this morning, church. Hear me. Persecutions and trials are coming to the church in America. There are many who seek to silence your voice. There are many who seek to silence the voices of pulpits, of pastors, of preachers, of evangelists. They want to silence the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And we're going to enter into a season where we may suffer greatly at the expense of the cross and the furthering of the gospel of Christ. But we must stay humble before the Lord. <coughs> Pardon me again. My throat's really dry. And water's not helping. But we must stay humble. We can't rise up in anger. We can't lash out in frustrations. We have to stay in a place of humility before the Lord. We have to be willing to endure. Because Christ himself endured great suffering. The New Testament church was birthed out of suffering. At the onset of the church, the afflictions were there. They tried to, to quiet, to silence, to kill the leadership of the church because the enemy did not want the truth of God's word into society because he knows that God desires to give grace and mercy. And when we hear the gospel of Jesus, people's hearts turn to it. So he can't stop God, so he tries to stop the church. He tries to silence us and he tries to censor us. You see it already in our society today. In the world in which we live in this nation. Voices being silenced. Voices being quiet, quietened. Stopped. Shuttered. The enemy, listen to me. The enemy is coming for the church. I'm being, I'm, I'm being as just straightforward with you as I can this morning. And I know this is a somber tone to it, but it shouldn't be. It don't have to be, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. But the enemy is coming for the church. But the enemy is coming for you. The enemy is coming for me. I know this. It doesn't bother me. I'm not in fear over that. Because I know the one that's greater than he. I serve the one that is greater than he is. I'm not in fear. But we must walk with vigilance and sobriety in the day in which we live. I heard the Lord Friday morning. I stood right over here as I walked through these, out this altar praying Friday morning. And I heard the Lord utter these words to me. And it makes sense to me now because God's tied this all together. But the Lord uttered these words to me. Trouble 
and struggle is coming to the church. Now, that doesn't just mean our church. It's the church. But we are not immune to it. I, we have this thought process that it's just little, little Hodges and we're just on the side of the road in Greenwood and Hodges area and we're just a little, little country church and God, the enemy's not going to see us. No, he sees you. He sees you. Why he sees you is because we preach Jesus. It's because we try to live Jesus. It's because we've been fasting and we've been praying for just a little over two weeks now. This is our last week of the Daniel's fast. I'm not stopping. I'm not backing up. He's been on my tail all day today. He has done everything he can to stop me from delivering what God is saying to you this hour. He has tried to frustrate me this morning. He's tried to aggravate me this morning. He's even tried to get me to fear and doubt that I heard what the Lord said. But I want you to hear me today. The enemy is coming for this church. He's coming for the church. He's coming for you. He's coming for me. He's coming for my family. He's coming for your family. Now, we can pretend that it's not true. We can pretend that, 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 that this, is, you know, this is just something the pastor ate last night and it's really not real. And, 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 and he's just, he's, he's, he's not, this doesn't apply to me, that, that I'm good, that, that I'm going to be okay. I didn't say the Lord wouldn't protect you or take care of you. I said the enemy's coming for you. Hear me. Hear me. I would be derelict in my duties and responsibilities as your pastor if I did not give you the truth. He is coming for you and he is coming for me. But here's what I know. Here's how. You ready? I'm going to give you the, the process. Here's how you stay sober, you stay vigilant. Here's how you operate, function, and live in a season when the enemy is going to afflict the church. You stay humble before God. What will that do? Well, when we are humble before God, it says, God, I don't have the answer, but you do. It says, God, I admit my frailty, but I understand your strength. It says, God, I admit that I can't protect my kids, but you can. It means, God, I, I, I don't have the, the answers for the church, but you do. I, I don't have all the understanding, God, but, but you do. We stay humble. We humble ourselves before the Lord. And we say, God, without you, we will be destroyed. And we would. We would be destroyed. We humble ourselves before God. And we cry out to God. We cry out to God like we never have. Now, if you've been fasting with us and praying with us these last two weeks, that's been the whole focus of the fast. It's been to call on the name of the Lord. It's been to call on the presence of God. Not to ask him for any specific thing, just his presence. So what God is saying to us this morning is humble yourselves before me. Do you notice in the scriptures that Peter said that we should be walk in humility one with another? Then we should humble ourselves before God. And then he said what the enemy was going to do. After we humble ourselves before God. After we get before the throne of God and we cry out and we call on the name of the Lord. He says be sober, be vigilant. He says resist the devil, stay steadfast in the faith. Knowing that you're not suffering by yourself. See, the enemy wants to isolate you in your sufferings. Because the enemy wants you to think that you're by yourself. But you're not. Peter says, your brotherhood throughout the world is suffering just as you are. This will not be an isolated event. The church of Jesus Christ will endure suffering. I know this ain't a message that that people want to hear and I mean we like to shout and sing and run the aisles and we like to think that you know glory is all over us and we, the days ahead will be easy and light 
Suffering is a part of the body. Jesus, Jesus, they rejected me, they'll reject you. They persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. We're not immune from it. But when we stay humble, something happens in us and something happens in the church and something happened in the earth. A remnant of the real church will rise. What you talking about, preacher? Y'all remember that show, Different Strokes? What you talking about, Willis? What you talking about, preacher? That when we stay, those that will humble themselves before God, those that will fall on their face and cry out to the God of heaven, that will endure the persecution, that will call on God in seasons of sorrow and in seasons of struggle and in seasons of, of trial and tribulation. When we call on God, when we stay humble before God, God will, one, he will protect his church. I don't care how hard the enemy tries, he will not silence the message of the real church. Hold on. I'm not done yet. He will not quiet the real worshipers. He will not silence the real preachers. Listen to me. The enemy seeks to silence us. But the real church who stays humble before God will rise in power and in glory. Hear me. Hear me. There will be many of the fellowship of believers that will compromise for security. Mm. Hear me. They will compromise out of fear, out of wanting safety, out of wanting to be left alone. They will compromise. But those that stay humble before the Lord cannot compromise. Because compromise is not in their spirit. See, the real church is not one of compromise. It's not one of comfort. The real church, the church, church of Jesus Christ, is one that will endure afflictions. One that will endure persecutions. One that will endure trials. One that will look beaten, bloodied, and battered. But one that will always rise again. They may try to silence us, but they will not quiet us. They may try to kill us, but they cannot stop the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The message of the gospel will go forward with internet, without internet, with Google, without Google, with Facebook, without Facebook. It doesn't matter. You cannot silence this word for thousands of years. They've tried to burn it. They've tried to destroy it. They've tried to legislate against it. But I've stopped by here this morning to remind you that if you will stay humble before the Lord, that God will resurrect a righteous remnant that will not bow in the face of the enemy, that will not cower in the heat of the day, that will not lay down cheapen herself or prostitute herself for safety and security. We will stand up and we will declare what thus saith the Lord. Ah, 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 Mandela Moko Sida La Mahanda, Lord Jesus. Mm. Listen, I've told you, I've preached it for weeks and months that there's a remnant that's about to rise. We want revival. We want to see a great move of God, but we think that comes in peace and security. Show me it in there. Show me in this word where, where souls were saved in safety and security. It was in persecution. It was in trials. It was in prison. Paul imprisoned. Wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. They locked him up, but they couldn't shut him up. The real church is a persecuted church. But you know what comes out of that persecution? It comes power. It comes glory. There comes an anointing upon the body of Christ. 
that when we endure for a season, for a season, the persecution, God will raise up the real church and the real church will stand glorified, crowned and adorned with the glory of the Son, the Father and the Holy Ghost. The real church will walk in authority and in power. The real church will cast down devils, pull down strongholds, rip to shreds principalities. The real church will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The real church will not fear what man can do to this body, for we fear the one that has the power to kill us twice. I don't fear man. My God. Ah. Lord God, speak to your people. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. There is an hour coming that the real church will rise. And the only question that remains is are you a part of the real church? And will you rise in due time? Will you humble yourselves before God? I'm about done. I could keep preaching, and I want to. Believe me, I want to. But I'm going to stop because I heard the Lord just now say, Humble yourselves. <laughs> Oh God, oh God, oh God, we yearn for your glory. We yearn for the presence of God. My soul cries out to you, O oh Lord. Our souls cry out to you, O oh God. Mm. Church, oh God, there's such a stirring, stirring in the atmosphere today. I want you to hear me one more time. God is calling us today to humble ourselves before Him, not before men, not before nations or governments. Hear me. But humble yourselves before Him. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to do that. I'm going to give you the opportunity. It's up to you what you do. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. If you ain't figured it out by now, I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to get in this altar today. And I'm going to call on God for a nation that's broken and hurting. I'm going to call on God for a church that has been weak and impotent. I'm going to call on God that in the season that we are entering into, that we shall, we may, we may endure and encounter persecutions, trials, and sufferings, but we will come out with the glory of God dripping off of us. That we will be under the protective wing of God, the protective hand of God, and we will rise up in the challenges that we face in our nation and in this world. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to come. I'm gonna, you can spread out. You ain't got to be on top of each other. You can, we can spread it out on these pews, on these pews. We can spread out on these. We can spread out on the floor. If you can physically get on your hands and knees, get down and pray. If you can't, if it's not physical, just, just bow your heads where you are. But I'm all, for the next few minutes, I want us to humble ourselves before God. And I want us to call on the Lord of heaven. He is our only hope, church. He is our only hope today. And it's in Him we are strengthened. And it's in Him that we shall rise. Will you pray with us? If you can't come, will you humble yourselves right where you are? Those of you that's watching us on Facebook right now, I'm going to ask you right where you are, in your living rooms, your bedrooms, or wherever you are, to stop what you're doing, humble yourselves, get on your hands and knees if you can, and humble yourselves before God and cry out to the God of heaven this morning.
God, we call on you today. Oh, Lord, we humble ourselves before you this morning. And, Lord, we call on your holy name today. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Without you, God, we'll perish. Without you, God, this is foolishness. Without you, God, this is foolishness. We need you, oh God. Lord, we humble ourselves before you today. I need you more. Can you worship a minute, church? Those of you who are not praying, can you just worship a minute? Father, speak, Lord. Somebody needs to obey the Lord. Speak, Father. Speak, Father. Hear me, says the Lord, for I have seen your call today. I have seen your tears. I have seen the rending of your hearts as you've cried out to me. And trust me, says the Lord, that I am with you. 
that you will go nowhere that I don't lead you, and nothing will touch you, says the Lord. For though the enemy may seek you, he will not have you, for you belong to me, says the Lord. And though he will try to overwhelm you, I will overwhelm him, says the Lord. And though he will try to destroy you, I will break his hand, says the Lord of hosts. For he shall not have you, he shall not have this church, and he shall not have this community, says the Lord. For this community I have given to you. I have entrusted it into your hands. It is yours, says the Lord. Fear him not. Fear him not. Fear him not, says the Lord. Trust me. Trust me when I declare this to you. Trust me that I have said this to you in days gone by. That I am with you and that I am for you. And that you shall possess all that I said you would possess. Stay humble before me, says the Lord. Do not get puffed up in yourselves. Do not seek the vainness of your flesh. But stay humble before me, says the Lord, and great things shall you do, and glory shall cover you, says the Lord of hosts. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Cry out to him, church. Cry out to him, church. Father, we cry out to your name today. We cry out to your holy name today. We cry out to your holy name today, Lord. You are worthy. You are. Mm. Just worship him, Lord. Just worship him, church. Just worship the Lord right now. Just worship the Lord. He's worthy. He's the only one that's worthy. The Lord is the only one that's worthy right now. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we call on your name. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're the only one that is worthy. Mm. More than the air I breathe. Thank you, Lord. More than the song. Father, thank you. More than thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, I More feel a remnant rising, Lord. Lord I, I feel a people by. that have shaken off the cold. They've shaken side. off their desires. And they've cast themselves at your feet, Lord. I feel it, Lord. I feel it in this place, Lord. I feel a people that are hungry for you, God. I sense a stirring. Something's broken the atmosphere, Lord. Uh, I see a sloshing of water. I see water moving about. Uh, it is my spirit, says the Lord. Mm. It is my spirit moving from front to back, side to side, and top to bottom, says the Lord. For I shall pour out on you glory that you've never seen. I shall pour out on you glory that you've never dreamt of, says the Lord. For my spirit is with you. My power is in you. My word is in you, says the Lord. I am with you. You do not have to fear, for you are not alone. For you are my remnant. You are my people. You are my bride, says the Lord, and I will protect my bride. And I will glorify my bride, says the Lord. My spirit is in this place. And though men may run from it, and though people may speak against it, it is my spirit, says the Lord. And my spirit will heal, and my spirit will mend broken hearts, and my spirit will lead the lost to salvation. In this house, says the Lord, my spirit is here, says the Lord of hosts. And I am with you this day, says God. I am with you as you assemble. And I am with you as you disperse. I go with you everywhere that you go. I'll always be with you, says the Lord. Have I not spoken it to you and have I not promised it to you, says the Lord. That I would be with you always. 
that I would go before you and behind you and beside you, says the Lord. I'm with you, says the Lord. Do not fear in the season or hours that you may not feel me, but have faith that I am with you, that I am near you, and that I am fighting for you, says the Lord. And I am with you, says the Almighty God of heaven. My God, church, I, I, I can't even explain to you what I feel this morning. And I know there's some of you in here that feel the same. You sense the stirring in the spirit. You sense the moving in the spirit this morning. And some of you may be in fear of that, but I don't want you to be afraid of God. You have no reason to fear God like you would fear man. For God seeks not to harm you nor to hurt you, but God is going to lead you to where he's called you to be. Oh, God, we thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Oh, there's power. I feel the power of his presence right now. I feel the power of his presence right now. Just stand with us for a moment. We're getting ready to leave here shortly. But I want us to stand together and I want us to worship together one more time today. Whatever you want to sing, ladies and gentlemen. But I just want you to worship. And I want you to love on God for a minute because God has spoken powerful things to us today. I received them. I received them by the Spirit of God. I am in agreement with God. Not that it matters to anybody. Not that it even matters to you. But I agree wholeheartedly with what the Lord has spoken. We are in agreement. God is going to do it. Not because of me. Not because of you. But because His Spirit is here. I'm nothing. I'm, you can find a lot better people to stand in this pulpit and preach the gospel. But you won't find anybody that loves God more than I love God. That'll go after God more than I will for you. Church, would you just stand and worship the Lord this morning? your heart today. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. I hope that is the anthem of your heart and the declaration of your lips today. In the days, weeks, months, and years that come, shall you never allow that desire to leave you that you need God more. Now, it's not really more of God because God is God, but it's more of us given to God. Amen. And I pray that as you leave this place today, I speak blessing over you as I always do. I love to do this. This is my joy. And I pray the Lord bless you, and I pray the Lord keep you, and I pray he'd make his face shine upon you. That, that God would go with you when you leave this house and when you go home today or work tomorrow, that the Lord will be with you. That he'll protect you and he'll bless you and he'll watch over you. And he'll prosper all that you do for his name and for his glory. Father, we thank you for the day that you have given us, for the moments of encounter that we have experienced this morning. We thank you. Father, there's nothing like your presence. <laughs> oh, there's nothing like your presence, God. And we thank you for immersing us in the presence of God today. We thank you for hearing the cries of your people. And we thank you that, Lord, it has not fallen on deaf ears or on the ears of someone who does not have the ability to fulfill the word. But Lord, you are able and willing to fulfill every word that you have spoken. And you will bring those words to pass. Because your word, your word will not return unto you void. But it will accomplish all that you sent it to accomplish. Father, help us to stay in that mindset, that spiritual set, that physical place of humility and humbling ourselves before the throne of God. That, Father, out of our humility, out of our willingness to lay prostrate before you, that a remnant, a righteous remnant shall rise, and the real church of Jesus Christ shall be seen in the earth. Father, we trust you, we love you, and we know that you are working on our behalf, and you're fighting for us today. Father, those among us that have been sick or are recovering from surgeries, Lord, may you touch their bodies and heal them. May you strengthen them. Those that are of our family and friends that are in desperate need of a touch of God because of COVID or because of complications from COVID-19 or because of other sicknesses that they may be enduring. Father, I implore heaven today on their behalf that, Father, you would send healing to their bodies. By your stripes, we are healed. And so, Lord, according to your word, they're healed today. Send healing, Lord, in the form of your presence. Let your virtue flow. And your glory sit upon them today. And Lord, we give you praise and glory for it all in Christ's name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. May you go in the peace, the strength, and the spirit of the Lord this morning.